So this KOH is super poisonous and it'll burn through your skin. So this is Amanita muscaria. Oh my gosh, it smells strong like cucumber. I'm taking a picture with some ultraviolet. Welcome to Mushroom Wonderland. All right, so we're riding along to an undisclosed location somewhere on the Washington coast. Here with Alan Rockefeller and Davi. She's been our cook, an amazing cook this weekend and driver. And it's a lot of mushrooms on your dashboard. What's, what's all this? I've seen the mushrooms, but never this many big ones. Uh, we've got a really good Sarkadon collection at Mount Hood a couple weeks ago. And so they're up there. We also have these nice green rusulas. Ooh. That's also from Mount Hood, and this is Gastrobolitis. Cool. Recently I, I saw a post about a banana smelling rusula, huh? Yeah, there was one that I found in Arizona, a uh, bright yellow rusula that didn't have any smell, but as soon as you dry it, then it smells like bananas very strongly, and then when it's completely dry, it loses the banana odor. Bizarre. So you could potentially, like somebody with some culinary skills, like Davi could like make a, you know, banana puree, like something that, uh, you know, use it as an ingredient. I don't know, but you probably want to cook them. Yeah, maybe if you use it when they're half dry, it would still have that banana. Right. But you also want to cook mushrooms, so I wonder if that would kill the odor. Either way, that's pretty interesting. You got a bunch of mushrooms in the back. Yeah. Back window too. Yeah, definitely. What happens plums if the cops blow you over? The plums in the trees. Um, oh, crabs plums. love mushrooms, uh, even more than hippies, so I think it would go really well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't even know what they would say. Uh, it really depends on the cop. You know, some of them love it, and some of them would hate it, but you know, in general, the job of a police officer is extremely boring. You know, They're just like waiting for something to happen all day. So if you can talk to them about mushrooms, they'll be very happy and entertained. Right. And they probably let you go for just about anything. Have you ever been pulled over by like a suspicious cop that was wondering, uh, you know, a lot of people think about magic mushrooms when they think of mushrooms. No, I've never had the, the mushrooms up on my dash be brought up at all. I don't think they can pull you over for something like that. They have to observe an actual violation. But didn't something happen down south? Somebody like, uh, asked about your mushrooms or like it had to inspect all these hundreds of mushrooms and they thought you had uh, some questionable ones? Yeah, so they weren't on my dashboard. Oh, where were they? In my backpack. Oh, they, oh, wow. they went through your backpack. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. Yeah. Next. In Mexico? No, in Tennessee. Oh, oh damn. It's one of those false drug dog alerts where they say that your car smells like drugs and that the dog says so, but they actually just lie so they get rid of your Fourth Amendment rights. They've been sketchy. Oh. And they dug through so your backpack do. and were questioning mushrooms, huh? Yeah, that's what they do all day, every day. The Drug Addiction Task, task Force of Knoxville. Were they psilocybin mushrooms? No. Uh oh. There's about 800 different species. <laughs> Sweet. What do you think we're going to run into today? What are you hoping for? Well, the last time I was here, I got a beautiful photo of Aloe Claveria purpurea. Oh, yeah, beautiful. So oh. I would love to see more of that, though I can't imagine I can do a better job with them than I did last time. They're magical. But, you know, these shore pines out here, Pinus contorta, have a lot of really good ectomycorrhizal mushrooms with them, so we could see a lot of cool stuff. Awesome. Should I pack a snack? I'm looking forward to it. I this love snacks. Should I, I want a cherry now. You want cherries now? Would you like some dried cherries? Yeah. We're all, oh my God, we get so along because we're, we're snackers. We, <laughs> we love to eat, so that's why we get along. <laughs> he awesome. tries all my recipes. Cool. What a beautiful day. Yesterday it poured rain it all day, mm -hmm. and today the sun is out here on the Washington coast. You've been all over the country, huh? Yeah, I was just in Illinois a couple days ago. Do you ever settle down and just want to stay at home and just... Not yeah, doing. when it's not raining anywhere in the world. <laughs> <laughs> so never. This dude is busy. I'm a pretty busy guy, but 
you inspire me with your busyness because I'm like, all right, I'll keep going. So cool. Thanks for letting us join you on this hike today. Yeah, of course. Swillis. Yeah. This one's pretty cool because it's a real small Swillis and it has real big pores and a ring, so it's Swillis umbanatus. Do you recognize this one? Who got this? See, I don't think I have my KOH with me. Does anyone have KOH? I got some. Cool. So these uh, Kuranfas like to eat Swillis. I put KOH on it. You can see it turns bright red. Both on the cap and the stem and the inside. Beautiful. Isn't that a good color? That is wow. beautiful. Yeah. It's like blood. Kuranfas. What, what, what do you put on it? What oh, the potassium hydroxide. So it's a really strong base and it makes a lot of things change color. So, um, if you cook this mushroom, it'll also turn that color. And it also turns real slimy, so these turn into like purple slugs in the pan if you cook them up. Is it edible? It doesn't yeah. sound very... <laughs> the name <laughs> sounds nasty, Krugomphus. <laughs> if you're a really good chef, you can make amazing food with Krugomphus. Really? Ah. If you're an average chef, it'll be really yucky food. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to carry this for now? Ah, uh, sure, thanks. That's Rusilla. And you can tell it's a rusilla because the stem snaps like chalk. So, if you try to break it, it's like most mushrooms when you break it, it'll either bend or it'll kind of have all these fibers. And these are just like a piece of chalk when they break. The gills also are really, bra really brittle. So Lactarius are, will do that too, right? Yeah, so these are uh, edible if it's not spicy when you chew it. Oh, oh look at that. Here's another swillis. So really? this one is uh, Swillis tomentosus, <laughs> and Swillis tomentosus also grows mycorrhizal with these shore pines, really viscid cap, kind of like all yellow, and a lot of times the stem base will stain blue on these. So uh, tomentose or tomentosus is in a lot of mushroom names, what does that mean? It uh, refers to the texture of the cap. Gotcha. Kind of fuzzy-ish. Yeah, though this one isn't particularly tomentose. You want to take some I was gonna flip my phone upside down so I can get the lens right on the ground. What kind of mushroom you got there for the people who don't know? This is uh, Porcini, it's Bolitus edulis, Grand edulis. I'd love to hear some of the identifying factors because there's a lot of stuff that looks similar. I the main thing on these is the reticulate stem. So if you look at the stem, it has this net pattern all over it, especially at the apex. Yeah. Yeah, we are in the right, right. Sorry, right on it. Swillis tomentosus. So this Swillis only grows with two needle pines. Yeah. All Swillis are edible. Yeah, this is really beautiful. Would it cook up slimy? You know, me, my Probably, cooking. Probably, yeah. <laughs> I've heard to wash the slime off the cap, or peel it. Yeah. So if you're going to get a picture of them, you should have someone uh, sit in the sun, because mushroom pictures oh, never look good you. in the full sun. Just like that, and then if we had a couple more to like put up, upright. See any more Swillis around here? Could make a real nice photo out of this. But maybe we got them all. Here you go. That's cool. That'll go good in the back here. I'm trying to take a photo of this with the iNaturalist app yeah. to log the location, and then I'll also take a photo with the camera. So you're doing an iNaturalist? 
observation right now. I'm I'm natural stuff observation stuff. right now, and then <laughs> I will take a picture <laughs> and uh, put stuff. the picture on <laughs> iNaturalist and Mushroom Observer. Oh, this is cute. Nice. How many obs observations do you have on iNaturalist, do you know? Um, somebody told me I had like 25,000 the other day. I haven't looked recently, but they may have been correct. Somebody told me 200,000 yesterday. Uh, that's <laughs> identifications, I think. Oh, okay, yeah. Wow. Only identification. Yes. Oh, so we're getting some blue going on. Yeah, especially that one yeah, cut in yeah. half. And some of these other ones you can start to see mm -hmm. a little bit of blue. That's cool. These two of the same thing. And yeah, that's our crew gum face. Okay. Um, that one that was turning bright red in, K in KOH. Oh, okay. And then this is Strobilaris. Mm. And so it's probably Strobilaris trusillatus unless it was on a spruce cone, and then it would be Strobilaris occidentalis, but there's no spruce around here. So this KOH is super poisonous and it'll burn through your skin. Just uh. on your Yeah. And so now, <laughs> if you touch your hand, you'll feel, if you see how it feels soapy? Yeah, it makes yeah. soap so your fat. It made soap right there, oh but this is not soapy at all. It's just only soapy when you touch it, so wow. you're making your own soap. Oh, that's creepy. Let me get over <laughs> Super scary, right? But hopefully he didn't make this too concentrated, so it doesn't really do anything. Okay. It's ultra concentrated. concentrated oh, no, I'm just kidding. Then, uh, it came pre-mixed. I don't know what oh, they did yeah. in the laboratory. Probably five, that's five percent. Oh, 10%. Um, That's pretty strong. Oh, yeah. It's not strong enough to be dangerous, but if it was any stronger than that, I wouldn't yeah. put it on her hand. Oh. <laughs> so I just took a test shot here, and you can see the histogram. It's coming right to the right, but not quite all the way to the right. So that means I have the color level set just correctly. So that's the best exposure right there. That was negative 0.7. So now I will focus it just a little bit too close. So all the mushrooms are blurry because they're focused close. And then turn the ISO all the way down, open the aperture all the way. So that's ISO 31, F3.3. And I'll go into focus shift shooting. And I'll tell it to take 27 pictures. I think our lighting is really good with that sun behind me and me sitting in the shadow. So I don't think we are need. Are you stacking? Is yeah. That what you're doing? So it, it'll take 27 here, and then I'll stack them on the computer when I get back. Okay. Combine them with Helicon. Mm -hmm. So now, when I look, all of the mushrooms are blurry, but the background is in focus. So that means 27 was just barely enough. And if we look here and flip through them, and you can see all the different mm -hmm. caps come into focus. Yeah. So that'll give us a really nice blurry background and super sharp. Alright, got a lactarius here. Oh, nice. We've already tasted the spicy effect. I don't know what it is. Uh, yeah, the lactarius rufus. Rufus. So you can see the Krugonfus eating the Swillis oh. right there. It's eating it? Yep. I thought they were like a filter. It parasitizes it, huh? Oh. And this thing here is Krugonfus, which are basically Swillis that never open up, so they're genetically really close to Swillis. They're called what? Uh, Rhizopogon. Okay, not Krugonfus. No, it's no. Oh. Is it like a puffball? Mm, no. No. It's more like a truffle. These are the only truffles that bounce. So uh, if you throw them at a hard surface, they bounce almost like a Super Bowl. They're not, not related to the to the Italian white truffle, huh? No. Is that the same thing? They're related to Swillis. It is. I used to have a hard time remembering Sue Willis, so I just thought like Bruce Willis's mom is probably named Sue. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, it's the texture you see when you cut them open. Oh, it looks like a horse chestnut or something. Very solid. Is it crunchy? Uh, no. Oh, yeah. Soft. Soft. Peas, huh. probably. It is like a Super Bowl. Oh, really? So these are good as edibles then if they're similar to truffles? There's a bunch of them. Yeah, yeah, they're all over here. So we can take um, one to the park and They walk. are edible, but they don't have much flavor and they cook up pretty slimy, so they're like really yucky truffles. <laughs> well, most truffles are very yucky. It's like well, maybe only about 1% of them are good, 99% of truffles are terrible, and some of them are even poisonous. Okay. Sweet. Are you getting ready to take a picture? Is that what's going on here? Yeah, I think I need a picture of these. <laughs> Like six times. Mm -hmm. I wonder if those oh. Grugonthus can parasitize Rhizopogons too. So they're really closely related to Swillis. Strongest stone. That's really cool. It's not Mycena with those really closely spaced gills and plain cap. No, I don't recognize it. Are there any more of them around? There were Beautiful. quite a few. Oh, awesome. Mm -hmm. Let's go work on those next. I'll have to find them. Do you want to cook these up, Dobby? I'm sorry? You want to cook these up? Yes, I would love to. Oh, great. <laughs> nasty truffles. <laughs> but it won't be nasty if she cooks right? them. Right? She's going to find a way. <laughs> I will do it right. <laughs> Even if they are, you can't say it. No, I'm just <laughs> no he, he told me when the taste is bad. Thing, so. <laughs> I've saved her from culinary design. Yeah. I know this is good. Oh, this is poor. Oh, yeah. Tooth. Is it another? Sarcodon. It's not a sarcodon. What is it? Oh my gosh, it's a sarcodon. Is it? <laughs> I'm used to a, like, like the big. Like, yeah, the umbraticus, umbraticus or whatever. What is it? Which species is this? Do you know? Yeah, all over the ground I wish there was more, but pickle really sarcodon is yummy. Sarcodon. Yeah. That's a big one. That's you don't know what? I don't know if we have names for our sarcodons. Okay. Is this, this? is this similar to the ones that were pickled that I ate this morning? No, the other one's hawkswing. Yeah. Like hidden them. The one's hidden them. Oh. Yeah, this could be the same. Is it? Why? It, is it too young? It doesn't have the striations on top. This is a very young one. Like it doesn't have spines either, but it will. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna keep it. I might pickle, pickle it. it. I pickle everything. <laughs> So you're using external light as well yeah, as the sunlight. I added, added some light because the sunlight's coming from this way. Gotcha. So I decided I wanted since uh, some light coming from this way to balance that out. Yes, gloves. Is this the same as these guys? Yep. Yeah. Okay. What are these guys called? Real dark Krugumfis. spores. They look so gross to me. Krugumfis? Krugumfis. Krugumfis. Mm -hmm. Those are going to be for the dinner table, huh? Possibly. Okay. Yeah. No, you got to take yours for the dinner table separate. I'm saving those. Oh, there. Are you? Yeah. I'll have to find more, is what I'm saying. Those well, other here's your, your beginning. Yes. They don't even smell like anything. Place. No, they don't have any smell. It's just like Swillis. Hmm. They're basically Swillis that never open up. Weird. I, what's the name? How do you say it again? Rhizopogon. Rhizopogon. Oh, oh, Davi, 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 look! What? Another one! There's some. <laughs> <laughs> but you said they bounce, so we could take one of those at the in the parking lot and see how high we could bounce it? Yeah, for sure. That'd be fun. That'd We're be a fun it? exercise. Yeah. And... Or even just throw it off a tree. Oh, Davi, Davi! I see it, <laughs> Alan! Oh, but the, I was pointing out those before. So you got those, yes, you got I those. Yes, I see that. They're all over. Oh my gosh, we're going to eat good tonight. <laughs> 
Do you remember where those little brown ones were, Bree? Sit in the moss. <laughs> You ever take a spore print from mushrooms that small? Yeah, sometimes on tin foil or microscope slides. Oh, it's like I like to grow out the pine needle. That looks like we still have brought a piece. Yeah. And there's some of the roots. Oh, awesome. It's great. It's the host of a lobster mushroom. You might find some lobster. Some of those Russula brother peas have um, like blue right where the stem connects to the gills. Hmm. Say it again, Alan. Somebody's some of those Russula brother peas have blue right where the stem connects to the gills or even blue gills. Isn't there a few different uh, kind of like sub species of breva peas? Yeah, there's a bunch. In fact, we don't have the real Breva peas here. Oh. Species described from New York. So the mm. ones out here mostly don't have names yet. So we'll just call them Breva peas until we get names for them. Definitely edgeless, grand edgeless, yeah. Yeah. Nice. One thing you'll notice is you see a little bit of red color in the pores, and the other porcinis don't get that red color in the pores. I found an edgeless last year that bruised blue a little bit. Oh, they do a little bit, yeah, they can. Yeah. Do you dare me to eat this? Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> oh, it's like split open. How's it taste? <laughs> Nutty. Nutty. Kind of like a pecan or something. So if you don't know what a mushroom is, what are you going to do? Oh, I'm going to take it back and ask Jack Johnson. Okay. Do you ever go into like field guides or use like Myco match online or anything like that? No, I don't use field guides or Myco match. You just talk to other mycologists mainly? Yeah, or just Google it. I These have it. a radish taste. Oh, okay. All four of them we saw earlier. Yeah. Oh, this is like both the cap and the stem are very slimy. So this is Amanita muscaria, and you can tell it's the North American one because the vulva is yellow. So Amanita muscaria subspecies Flava vulvata. Sometimes you'll see ones where the vulva is completely white all the time, and that's the European one. So this one's got these concentric rings at the stem base, and this nice orange cap. It could be red or orange. And they're very delicious, but a little bit poisonous and a little hallucinogenic. Cool. The sun gets rid of the yellow, so I'm kind of looking under here where the sun hasn't hit it very much, and you see the yellowish tint in the vulva there. So it needs special... So these things hatch out of an egg, and it starts with an egg, and the egg is covered in this color universal veil, and then as it expands, the universal veil breaks up, and part of it sticks to the stem base here, so it makes these concentric rings, and then other parts turn into the warts. And any special preparation otherwise, you know? I like to saute them in butter, and then when they're golden brown on all sides, add a little bit of salt and pepper. You don't need to cook it too long, or how long do you cook Until it's, it's golden brown. Do you boil them? No. You don't That's worry about that? That gets, about you, uh, that gets rid of uh, the most of the flavor, and also the psychoactive effect. Oh. The, the cooking it gets rid of yeah. the psychoactive effect? Well, if you boil them, boil oh, them and boil. throw away the water. So if you if you were going to eat this, how much of it would you eat? <laughs> uh, if I didn't want any effect, just like five bites. And if I did want an effect, more like 10 to 12 bites. 
so and then more than that whole, can get real what was unpleasant. This whole mushroom isn't that uh, that's about a good amount for a, a very mild psychoactive effect, and yeah. you'll notice it's working it's when you start to get sleepy. Time. Yes, exactly. And it's then you would yeah. fall asleep what? and sleep real good. <laughs> so what's your take on this whole Amanita chrysoblema thing? I don't think we know what chrysoblema is. There's a few species um, that are found out there. Chrysoblema is described from Michigan, but there's one that's called Amanita species IN10. It's real similar to Chrysoblema, and without a DNA sequence of Chrysoblema, we don't really know if that was the same as Kasawiai or IN10 or something else. So, uh, because we don't know what Chrysoblema is, I don't use the name. Gotcha. Here, it's quite a controversial debate these days online about whether it's called Muscaria or for quote unquote going back to Chrysoblema. Oh, you can call them whatever you want, the mushrooms don't mind. <laughs> 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 but I like that talk last night. They were talking about naming mushrooms, and I, you know, I, I like to say that's called a Amanita muscaria rather than that is because, you know, it's uh, we have no idea what that really is. We just call it. That's a good point. Muscaria. So fine distinction, but it seems that's cool. Yeah. That's like an Eckhart Tolleism. Yeah. Like plants and trees. Instead of saying this is what it is, just say this is what we call it. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't gotten brave enough. You look at make sure I've got Why are you collecting so many of them? Um. I like them. I like them. <laughs> and maybe it's a new species, you know. There's only one holotype, so if they end up publishing it, you'll want a bunch of them. So are you going to DNA sequence these? Uh, depends on how confident I am that I'm able to figure it out. Okay. Well, I'll ask Jack and Lauren what they are. And if they know what they are, then I'll Google it and see see if I think that it's like a species complex or if all the sequences in GenBank are all one thing. And oh, yeah. Cool. Lacaria? Not Lacaria. I think they're Entoloma. Oh. They have a beautiful purple stem. Oh yeah, that's gorgeous. I hope I can find Purpurious? more. Purpurious? Entoloma. I see three so far. Entoloma gonna have a pink spore, yeah? Yeah, it'll have a pink print. There's four. Oh, here's one that got broken. Oh. That's a nibble one. Yeah, no smell. Beautiful cobalt stem on that. That's really cool. And if there is no name given to it, then what happens? Like, uh, could you could you just name it, or do yeah, you have to? Don't you have to? Do you have to write a special publication or something in order to name a mushroom? Uh, they relaxed the rules a lot recently, so you have to write something, but it doesn't have to be special anymore. And does it have to be published by anybody special, or how? Yeah. no? So pretty much any anybody could just come, and if nobody's really described that, they could just give it a name and mm -hmm. publish it in something that has an ISBN number. Okay, you don't have to be like a certified mycologist or anything like that. I don't think there are any certified mycologists. Yeah, <laughs> that's not a thing. I just made no. that up. Okay.
that's the nice thing about going real slow. You only have like a two minute walk back to the car. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> We're gonna try uh, sequencing any of the stuff we found today. If I need to, yeah. Cool. Anyone in particular you were curious about? Oh, uh, whichever ones I can't figure out with the microscope. Oh, this is the secret behind yes, Alan yes. Rockefeller's photography here. Yep. Black velvet cloth. Don't tell okay. anybody. Which back way? Oh, Brie, could you get a behind the scenes scene shot yes. for us? I love yes. this. Yeah. Let's do nothing. This is what we do. You want this in there or not? Is this brush here, Alan? Or? Oh, I don't think it's going to make any difference. Okay. So that it, way uh, or the other your way? Your hands on the ground. Okay. I'm gonna hold it. Like... Get the black light. Like that. <laughs> Anyone else have a black light? Uh, not with me. Okay. Let's do it from one it's in side my truck. Then. It's pretty. I can't see. Very pretty. I'll lift up her skirt. So it's focus stacking right now? 87 pictures. Wow. So while we're waiting, what do you think about this new uh, decriminalization slash legalization stuff for uh, Oregon for the psil psilocybin mushrooms? That's a good idea. I think people should be able to buy mushrooms um, in the store or wherever. Bunch, so. Well, I don't think <laughs> this one lets people buy, buy mushrooms in the store, but um, they should pass one that lets people buy them in the stores. Yeah. But um, right yeah. now, right now it's a guided thing. Is that? Oh yeah. Be certified the people that are guiding or something is it a, a therapeutic vaguely yeah but anything that makes them less criminal is a good thing exactly they seem to make people happier than do them you know definitely and more well adjusted less likely to commit crimes mm -hmm. so you're a proponent for the uh, decriminalized movement on yeah. the psilocybin mushrooms. I yeah. think they should decriminalize all drugs. The more dangerous a drug is, the more important it is to decriminalize it because the really dangerous drugs, you know, people need medical supervision, they need to be able to get treatment, and arresting people only makes them more dangerous because then they ruin their life with felony records, they can't get a job, and they can't do anything other than sell drugs. So they should right. really decriminalize everything because the prohibition of any substance has never helped any people anywhere hey well thanks for taking us on this foray today yeah that was super cool so if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe and get more videos like this about foraging and uh we'll see you on the next episode see you thanks <laughs>